This morning I'm going to be preaching from the book of Proverbs, a very short scripture. Proverbs 17, 22. <clears throat> a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up bones. This is the word of God, and may he richly bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this word. We thank you for the writer of Proverbs, that he would challenge us, dear Lord, to learn how to laugh more and laugh often. Father, as we hear this word proclaimed, I pray that your spirit will be upon me, that as I speak, Lord, you speak through me and upon your congregation, that they would receive these words. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There was a man who placed some flowers on a grave of his dearly departed mother and started back towards his car with his attention when his attention was diverted to another man kneeling at a grave. The man seemed to be praying with profound intensity and kept repeating, Why did you have to die? Why? Why did you have to die? The first man approached him and said, Sir, I don't wish to interfere with your private grief, but this demonstration of pain is more than I've ever seen before. For whom do you mourn so deeply? A child? A parent? The mourner took a moment to collect himself and then replied, My wife's first husband. <laughs> this morning, I wanted to uh, start out with a little bit of joke, maybe put a little smile on your faces because you know I think church is probably the best place to come and share laughter and joy. And you know, I realize how difficult and stressful life can be for all of you. But how would our lives be a little bit different if we learned to laugh just a little bit more? How would your individual lives be if we woke up every morning with a smile on our face and a laugh in our heart? How would we be as a church if we learned to laugh together? Well, this morning I want to share with you three biblical ways to inject humor into your life. And the first is this. Look for laughter. Look for laughter. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes 3, 1 and 4, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. There's a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Psalm 126.3 says, We were filled with laughter and we sang for joy, and the other nations said, What amazing things the Lord has done for them. Proverbs 15.15 15 says, For the despondent every day brings trouble. But for the happy heart, life is a continual feast. How would you like it if your life were a continual feast? How would you like it if every time someone saw you interacting in life, they looked at you and said, wow, what mighty things God is doing in the life of that person. Just by looking at your life, just by seeing you every day. The writer of Ecclesiastes says there is a time to laugh. There's also a time to cry and a time to die and a time to live. There are different times. But I suggest to you this morning that every day is a good time to laugh and perhaps even be challenged to say in every occasion you can find an opportunity for laughter in your life. Did you know that it's okay for Christians to have a good time? It's okay to come to church and laugh and, and have fun and have a, a great time. In fact, I truly believe that Christians probably have the best times together in life. Did you know that Jesus Christ loved to have a good time? He loved to have a good time. Look who he, hang, look who he hung out with. He hung out with prostitutes and sinners. Not only did he hang out with prostitutes and sinners, but he went to parties. You know, back then, a wedding was more of a party. And so he enjoyed going to those occasions and situations. And the Bible also says that he enjoyed the fellowship of his friends. Jesus loved to have a good time. Now, when was the last time someone said to you what it says in Psalm 126.3? 
What amazing things the Lord has done for them. When was the last time someone looked upon your life and they were able to make that kind of statement about your own life? I want you to know that laughter, joyfulness, singing and shouting, these are, a, these are some wonderful, great tools of witnessing. When people see that, they want to be a part of that. They want a part of whatever it is that you're doing. Studies have shown, however, that people won't come back to church where everyone is unfriendly and long-faced. No one wants to be around people like that. No one wants to be a part or associate with people like that. But if you're laughing and enjoying life, that's the type of thing that's contagious, and that's what people want a part of. I want to share with you some other things that you can do to intentionally put laughter in your life. And the first is this. Hang out with someone who has a good sense of humor. Who in your life has a good sense of humor? You can all point to someone, whether at work or at home. I love to hang out with Shauna, my wife. I love my wife. She is funny. She has a contagious smile. She has a contagious laugh. In fact, when we get ready to go to bed at night, we're laughing about something. She's always laughing. She's fun to be around. I also have some daughters that are pretty funny. Uh, Sarah is very funny. She can be kind of quiet. But she's funny when you get to know her. And Grace, where are you, Grace? Grace is funny, too. Grace, she may not be intentionally funny. She's more naturally funny. She just, <laughs> she kind of just does things that are funny. You know what I'm saying? There are people at this church that are hilarious, and I was hoping they would be here, all of them, today. Jennifer's funny. My secretary comes into my office, and she makes me laugh. She's hysterical. She is absolutely funny. Miss Charlotte's not here today. Miss Charlotte's very serious, very serious in everything that she does. And she's always flittering about, you know, going in and out and in and out. And last week she came in and made a comment that just made me roar. She was so funny. And there are other people here. Melissa Sweeney back here is hysterical. And I've told her, haven't I, Melissa? You ought to have your own show. Yeah. <laughs> she could have her own show. Miss Gertrude Colley back there, funny, very funny. Miss Gertrude, just say something. <laughs> She's a funny lady. Miss Faye Ellis, funny. Very serious, very straightforward, very honest. Three Sundays ago, it's kind of a practice of our church before we get up to go sing, before we go to Sunday school. Everybody kind of gathers and sits around the tables. And I walked in, and everybody was seated. And I went over, and I stood by Miss Gertrude. And she looked up at my face, and she said, Hank, what is that on your face? And it was kind of a surprising question because it's been there for 30 years. But, Hank, what is this on your face? And I say, it's a goatee. And she says, well, why do you have it? And I say, to cover up the ugly. And I, I think that's it, to cover up the ugly. That's a pretty good comeback, you know. I've had a lot of practice. Miss Faye says, I think it accentuates it. <laughs> you remember saying that? <laughs> funny. That's funny stuff. Oh, my goodness, that's funny. You can hang out with people who make you laugh and give you a good chuckle because it does something for you. You can also read funny literature, greeting cards. Have you ever gone to Walgreens or Walmart and seen people just go through the greeting cards and they pick one up, <laughs> they put it back, pick up another one? You can also read the funny strips in the Sunday morning paper every day. How many of you have already read the comic strips? Not as many people do that, but those can be very funny. You can watch funny television shows like America's Favorite, Favorite Home Videos. I cannot help myself but laughing at that show. Seinfeld, Everybody Loves Raymond, Friends, and I don't know what other shows you watch. You can also see a, a stand-up comedian. I'll make it a clean one, though, you know. A good, clean, stand-up comedian. And you can share jokes at the dinner table. You know, there's an old saying, a family that prays together stays together. I think that a family that laughs together stays together, too. There was a family who got... Uh, a box and they put it on their dinner table and every day in the day they would find a funny joke and they would put it in a joke box and they come home and sit around in the evenings and they tell each other jokes. I mean, isn't that wonderful kind of uh, fellowship to share instead of the drama of the day or the bad things that happen during the day to tell, tell a joke or to share a joke? 
I'm glad Dewey's here because I want to share a golfing joke now. There was a man and a friend who were playing golf one day, Dewey. One, guy, one of the guys is about to chip onto the green when he sees a long funeral procession on the road next to the course. He stops in mid-swing, takes off his golf cap, closes his eyes, and bows down in prayer. His friend says, wow, that is the most thoughtful and touching thing I've ever seen. You are truly a kind man. The other man replies, yeah, well, we were married for 35 years. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. And you have my permission to tell that one on, on the golf course. So we can share kind of jokes that make each other laugh. So I think that the thing about it is we have to be intentional about finding laughter and looking for laughter. It's not hard to find and, and look for laughter. Just look at the choir loft up here and you'll see plenty to laugh about. Another thing is to take a dose of laughter every day. Proverbs 15.30 says, A cheerful look brings joy to the heart. Good news makes for good health. Proverbs 14.30 says, A relaxed attitude lengthens a man's life. And our scripture today says, Proverbs 17.22, that a cheerful heart is good medicine. Now the biblical definition for medicine is cure. So a cheerful heart, a laughing heart, cures things in our lives that need to be cured. Well, what sort of things do we need to be cured in our life? If you want to really know a, a real answer to that question, just look over my right shoulder and see somebody who's been giving out drugs for 50 years. At our uh, Wednesday morning, we say that he's our, our community drug peddler, and uh, he's been peddling drugs for 50 years. <laughs> Mr. Don, how many different kinds of drugs are there? Just, just take a stab at a number. How many different kinds of drugs would you say there are? Five to seven thousand. And what's the most expensive drug that you know of? The most expensive. The one I'm having to get. <laughs> Maybe you don't talk to Don. You talk to, you talk to Jim and ask Jim what the most expensive drug is. Well, you know, you've been, you've bought the drugs and you've had to have them and therefore whatever else you write. There's all kinds. And when you're watching television, I love the commercials that come on and say you have a bad case of depression, then take this drug and it will cure your depression. But if the following symptoms occur yeah. and 30 minutes later you get the idea that if the drug doesn't kill you, it might actually help you, you know? And so you want to kind of stay away from those kind of drugs. I want you to know that, that laughter is free. It doesn't cost a cent. And you can do it anywhere at any time. Do you, now, how many of you would believe that, that laughing is really healthy for you? I mean, are we really messing around here with this stuff? But, or is there really some truth to this? Amen. Did you know that children laugh up to 400 times a day? 400 times a day. Guess how many the average adult laughs? How many times? 17. Mr. Truman only laughs three times a day. <laughs> you heard him. 17, Mr. Truman. Now, listen to some of these things that laughing actually does, and it's been proven by scientists. Scientists have discovered that laughing boosts your immune system, which makes it more difficult for you to get coughs or colds. It relieves pain, depression. It protects your heart lowers blood pressure, improves breathing, and if you do it enough, it helps you lose weight. That's right. It helps you lose weight. Did you know that the more you laugh, the more your metabolism speeds up and the more calories you cut, you burn? So folks, maybe there's a new plan for you. Just laugh a lot. And did you know that if you laugh a lot and have a good sense of humor, people will be drawn to you. You're likely to have more friends. You're likely to achieve more at work. You're likely to be more productive, a better communicator, and seen as a better team player wherever it is you do work. And for those of you who are looking for a mate, make her laugh. 
Throw away your Fonzie jacket. Get rid of your Corvette. Do away with all the loud music. If you make a woman laugh, you're halfway to her heart. Scientists have discovered that women laugh 125% more than men. So ladies, wouldn't it be good to have a guy who can make you laugh? Guys, there's your trick for those of you who are looking. Now, I want to take it one step further. Did you know that scientists have even discovered that those with a sense of humor are 35% more likely to live longer than those who have bad attitudes? And would you believe this? that you stand a 70% chance of living when diagnosed with cancer as opposed to those who have a negative attitude about it when they are diagnosed with it. Now those are incredible statistics right there, folks. So is there some truth about laughter being the best medicine? I would say so. So do we need to learn to laugh? Who's the greatest laughter of all time? The greatest laugher of all time. Who created laughter? God. Listen to what the Bible says in Psalm 2.4. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The one enthroned in heaven laughs. Mark 10, 13, 16. I want you to imagine with me for just a moment Jesus smiling when this happened. Jesus is walking through a very crowded area. A lot of people around him. Children come up and rush him. Why do children love people? Because they're funny. They like people that are laughing. They like people that they can approach. Jesus was that kind of person. Look what it says. Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God, like a child, shall not enter it. Then he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. Do you see a stern-faced God holding those children? Or a God who smiles? I see a God who's smiling. Do you believe God has a sense of humor? Think about the things in nature he's created. The giraffe. The hippopotamus. Look at Jim. You know? Look at the Dallas Cowboys. You know? God has a sense of humor. In his book, In the Footsteps of Jesus, Bruce Marciano says, Yes, Jesus smiled. Yes, Jesus laughed. Jesus smiled wider and laughed heartier than any human being who has ever walked the planet. He was young. He radiated good cheer. Jesus was a man of such merriment, such gladness of heart, such freedom and openness that he proved irresistible. He became known throughout Galilee for his genuine strength, the sparkle in his eyes, the spring in his gait, the heartiness in his laugh, the genuineness of his touch, his passion, playfulness, excitement, and vitality, his joy. He made a dazzling display of love. He set hearts afire. He was an elated, triumphant young man with an incredible quality of life, so different from the solemn religious types he constantly encountered. So why do most renderings show him serious and mournful and weeping and grim and resolute? A smiling Jesus might be sinful to some and even sacrilegious to others. But I believe, and I think you believe, that Jesus was someone who smiled. The question I want to leave with you this morning is, how do you see Jesus? Do you see him as someone who's smiling at you? Now another question is, how do you represent that Jesus to others? How does that Jesus living in you come out to others? Are you someone who, when they see your life, can it be said about you what marvelous things God has done for your life? Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for laughter. You prove to us just by our differences that we are something to laugh at and to laugh about. And there are no telling how many times you laugh at our lives and you find pleasure in not only the good things that we do, but in the mistakes that we make. Help us, dear Lord, instead of seeing you as a a stern judge willing to exact his anger and wrath upon us, be people that see you more of having a smile on his face. 
with a warm embrace waiting for anyone who slips and falls in life. And let us be that kind of person that would be an example of how you smile at our lives before others in this world so that they might want whatever it is that we've got, that joy that only you give in Jesus' name. We thank you. Amen.